Lexicon can crouch. So when you look at the lexicon de- definition of that word that is said at sin lies at the door, it says sin crouches like an animal, like it's hunting you down. And what it wants, its desire is to is for you. Like it wants to rule over you. It wants to overwhelm you. It wants to overcome you. And we have the ability hi welcome back to another episode of the honey and milk podcast i am bernie's daughter your host if you're new here welcome feel free to look around subscribe leave a like if you're a returning viewer nice to have you back welcome back um so and i also want to take this opportunity to also say a happy easter week to you and to your family and to everyone around you your loved ones i hope you have a wonderful blessed week ahead easter week and i hope that the um death and resurrection of jesus christ is revealed to you afresh this week as well as with every other day of your life in jesus name um i'm really glad that somehow this topic decided to fall during this week it wasn't my intention if you watched the previous video you would also know why um but this is going to be a two-part series and i really really hope that i will be able to speak on it in the way that i have sort of understood it this past few weeks so right let's dive into today's episode today's episode is going to be talking about hidden sins and um the goal of this two-part series is to expose or not to expose the hidden sins um to understand what sin is and why it can seem like sometimes our sins are only for us and nobody else's going through the struggles that we're going through um so for this part so like i said it will be a two-part series this part we'll be talking about like what I would call the theoretical aspect of it and then the second part we'll talk about the practical aspect of it like how can we expose the hidden sins that want to stay hidden yeah so let's dive into it (laughs) so we'll be starting with um hidden sins part one um I will be looking down and by God's grace we'll be having a lot of scripture today that will be talk like I'll be reading out as well Um, this episode, like I said, is theoretical and it's basically to cover what is sin, how does sin operate and can we actually defeat sin? Like was sin defeated? Was it overcome? How, how did Jesus do it and everything? Um, starting off with the first thing, like what is sin? Um, if you google (laughs) uh look up the definition in a dictionary what is sin you would get a definition that says it's the transgression of a divine law so um it's a transgression against divine law it is um a moral um moral moral misstep or like there's a definition for it and if you look at the lexicon of the bible dictionary like um so there are some bibles that you can see the original greek or hebrew um words so if you look in the lexicon of the bible you would see that its definition is directed towards a misstep an error or an offense so i'm once again i'm not here to negate these things but um when i started studying on sin and um how it's described in the bible it's really really ex it it exploded how i understood sin and it made a lot of scriptures start to make sense and why they would be described in this way because i always thought like sin was an action but it is an action and i'm not going to go ahead of myself but um i want us to start from Genesis 4 verse 7. So that is the first time in the Bible that we see the word sin. So if you had to search your Bible and ask, like, what was the first time? First time the word sin was said. It was um, actually God talking to Cain in Genesis 4 verse 7. 
I'm reading the Amplified Version. It says, if you do well, believing me and doing what, it, what is acceptable and pleasing to me, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, but ignore my instruction, sin crouches at your door. Its desire is for you to, is for you to, over, sorry, <laughs> Amplified is a bit confusing. Its desire is for you, that is to overpower you, but you must master it. So I'm going to read in, um, I let's try KJV. So I'll be also going through different versions of the Bible scriptures as well. But I think I'll try my best to stay as close to KJV and NKJV as I can. So KJV says, if thou doest well, would thou not be accepted? And if thou, is, thou doest, you know what, I'm just going to go to NKJV. Thank you very much. <laughs> this is just to make the conversation flow a little bit better so that I don't I don't break too much. So right, NKJV says, um, Genesis 4 verse 7, If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Um, just starting at the scripture, I started asking myself, number one, why would God describe sin? as a thing that can lie at your door like what is the door number one how does it have the ability to lie number two um number three is like it has desires and then number four is its desire is to rule over over um man so its desire is for you is to overpower you is to control you is to rule over you and i was like okay this is not describing an action this is not describing something um it takes it kind of has you have to be you have to have a will in order to have a desire and the fact that sin the way god described sin to cain is that it's desire it has a desire so it is actually a it has a living being component to it and not only does he have a desire, it also has an achievement. He has a goal. It is to overrule or to rule over um, a person. And so when I started entering into this, I was like, this this makes so much sense. And I think that's why I started getting overwhelmed with it because a lot of scripture is like, I would think of how Paul would describe and say, okay, be ye servants of not sin, do not give your members to unrighteousness and all of that, and, da, 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 and how God redeemed us and moved us from the kingdom of the sun to the, from the kingdom of um, darkness to the kingdom of his son. And I was like, okay, now it makes sense because I see sin described as a master. I see sin described as a ruler. I see sin described as a spirit. And so, um, I, yeah. And so, like, it now opened up the, like I said, it opened up a lot of scriptures. I'm just trying to see if I can have my, have a smooth conversation so that I don't get anybody lost in this conversation. So now I want us to go to Romans 3 verse 20. Romans 3 verse 20. Romans 3 verse 20, the NKJV. Another definition of, I won't call it the definition of sin. There is also another verse that talks about the definition of sin. Um, it says, Therefore, by the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. So we get to know about sin. The whole, Like I said, this whole episode is to talk about what is sin. How do we know more about sin? The Bible says that you can know the knowledge of sin comes by the law. So if um, the law of sin, sorry, not the law of sin. <laughs> if the law shows the shows what sin is, then it makes sense that in 1 John in 1 John 3 verse 4, John goes ahead to describe um, 1 John 3 verse 4. 
John goes ahead to describe that whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. So if I say this in the KJV version, um, yes, it says whosoever commit, committed sin transgressed also the law for sin is the transgression of the law. So a simple definition um, in addition to what I've already described is that not only is sin, um, not only does sin have a desire, not only is the desire of sin to rule over you, sin is everything that God wants, every law of God, <laughs> everything that the Lord has put down as a rule over us, his people, over us, his creation, everything that would align us to the kingdom of heaven sin is completely against it so which is why like through the law we can also know about sin because once you know what to do you also know what not to do so now i hope this is coming together a little bit well um so we have two definitions of sin we have um not really two definitions of sin but rather now we we are getting the a better picture of what sin is and why it's not only an action but it's also it could be linked to a spirit right so as we define sin as a being that wants to rule how can how can it rule or rather how does it operate so for everything to for every ruler to have um to have a rulership i guess to have a kingdom it has to have a system it has to have things that it rules through so for that we'll go to romans 6 12 verse 12 sorry romans 6 12 to 23 it's a rather long scripture but i hope we will be able to cover it so romans 6 12 to 23 says therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies it says that you should obey it in its lust so how r sin can rule and reign in your body, which is also where it reigns, it reigns in your body, is that you obeying its lust is you allowing sin to reign in your mortal body. Then 13 says, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall ha not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slave, that one slave whom you obey? Whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form, that, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. In, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. But just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanliness and of lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and in the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sin's achievement is death. It is, it is so passionate about death <laughs> that it pays. So if you are a servant to sin if you have subjected and disobeyed god in which you're basing it will pay you it will it, it it's crazy <laughs> it will pay you and it will pay you in death so if you're if you're into 
I feel a bit sensitive saying this, but I'm just going to call it as it is. So if you're into witchcraft and the devil tells you that he can give you fame, he can give you um, money, he can give you whatever. So he will pay you and he will pay you in death. He will give you what you've asked um, and you are working hard for him. I hope you know he's you're working hard <laughs> to sin and he will pay you and he will pay you in death. He will pay. It might not be death to you personally. It could affect your children. It could affect your environment. It could be death, not only like physical death where your flesh dies because each of us will have the first death, but it could be, it will be the second death. Um, it will be the second death. It would be, it could actually end up killing you. It could be death in health. That's you'd have sicknesses. It could be death in finances. You could be broke. It could be death in your mind. You would not have peace. You would not have joy. You would have the money. You would have the fame, but you would not have sleep because God gives his beloved sleep. You would be tormented in every way. It would cause death around you. Because that is all it can give you. That is the end game of sin. It is death. Even if you live a great life as a worker of sin on this earth, I guarantee you the only thing it can pay you is death. So sin's end game is death. And it's, I would call it like, I would say like the boss of sin. So like maybe sin is like a... See no, I would say sin is like the branch manager, death is the CEO. The whole purpose of sin is to bring about the reign of death onto every person that is working for sin. And um, the scripture that we just read says that you were once members, you were once slaves, you were once servants to unrighteousness, unto sin. And maybe for you, you, you're watching this and you're like, I haven't done any witchcraft. I haven't done anything. I haven't said anything. Like, I'm a good person. Um, sin found its way to all of us through one man, through Adam. And because Adam transgressed God's law. So I'm also going to explain what transgression is. Transgression is basically to um, break. Like... You know, when um, it's like trespassing, that's, I'm trying to break down this word. <laughs> Transgression. Transgression is an act that goes against a law, a rule, a code, a code of conduct, basically an offense. So an, a transgression is to go against a law. That's the easiest way to explain it. So um, let's say you're not meant to pass through a red light and you drive through a red light. You driving through that red light is breaking a law. That is a transgression. That is the simplest way I can describe a transgression. And um, we have already established that sin is transgression of God's law. It is transgression of the law. So the first law that we see is the law that God gave to Adam, where he says that the day you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that day you will surely die. That was a law that God gave to Adam. And Adam to eve so which is why like it was until adam had eaten the fruit because eve had eaten the fruit but then she gave it to adam and it was when adam ate it that i believe was the whole issue um i transgressed <laughs> gosh <laughs> so yeah so it was when um, sin found its way into all of us through one man, Adam, because Adam transgressed God's law and then gave his members. So his members is like his body parts, like his body, he gave his body to sin. And through him, because he was the father of all those that came after, 
through him everyone has sinned so there's um for everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of god so let me read romans 5 verse 12. oh okay romans 5 verse 12 it's just one chapter back from where we read the last time it says therefore just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed where there is no law nevertheless death reigned from adam to moses even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of adam who is a type of him who was to come and um there's a there's a saying that i like that i got from um a person i listened to so a pastor i listened to apostle aaron Asai. he says the way he described it was that just as it took a man to create a problem it would take a man to solve the problem just if it was god that created the problem it would be god that would have to solve the problem if it was an angel that or son of god that when they came down they created the problem it would take a son of god to solve that problem and here the sin the rulership and the reign of sin that was found or rather that spread through adam it was a man that created the problem so that is why jesus had to come in the likeness of flesh in the likeness of a man which is why he also has the title son of man and he had to come and solve that problem so now we're in the third part of today's episode where i asked um not where i asked but where i said that we're going to be looking at how jesus solved this problem how is it then that we are now able to choose who we get to submit to we we can choose who we get to obey you know and um Jesus came to reinstate the kingdom of God. It is a kingdom that is governed by God's law. So now, just as we have transgressed transgressed God's law, God is a righteous judge. And there is going to have to be um, a punishment for that. And it says the wages of sin is death. So it had to take dying. It had to take the person who had committed that sin um death it had to the person had to go through death in order to pay the wages of sin right and um jesus is just as how sin's achievements and sin's end goal is death jesus's end goal is eternal life which is why he can say i am the life i am the way i am the truth he is the life and it's through his blood that we can be um redeemed so now jesus's death and resurrection is so powerful it is so powerful it has a manifold um aspect to it number one we have the through the death and through the blood of jesus christ we get to have our sins forgiven that means every transgression that we have done against god every punishment that we are supposed to have jesus died in order for us to live in order for our payment of transgression transgressing god's law to be paid jesus's death took took care of that then jesus's death and resurrection then opened up a door for us to be able to now be moved from the kingdom or or rather the rulership of sin to the rulership of God and and then after that through Jesus Christ we then get to enjoy the gift of eternal life so I hope I am not too botchy with everything that I've said so far Jesus came to reinstate the kingdom of God which is why like the first a message that John the Baptist as well as Jesus spoke about was repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and jesus's achievement is life because and because his life is valuable because the life of god cannot be bought 
it, it doesn't matter how many hours and days you work you can work full time 24 7. the fact that you want or have life you can never use your life to pay if you get what i mean and so that is why it cannot be a salary thing it it cannot be a thing that you work for and then it is given to you it is just it has to be a gift because you cannot pay for it so jesus gives us the gift of eternal life and now we get to work from that gift so which is why we also have a verse that says that we are to work out our salvation just imagine that i give my child a i see that my child really needs a car or really needs a phone and then because my child is trying not to i don't know you want to keep the gift wrapped up cute to the side the person doesn't end up using it even though the whole point of me giving you is to use it and you then have to take the phone out of the box you have to use it you have to work that gift so which is why when we have verses that says work out your salvation this is because it is it is a gift that you need in order to live a life of righteousness in order to live a life that is pleasing to god in order to live the life that you were created by god to live so you cannot say i'm saved and then keep your salvation in a cute box no you cannot say you're saved be transformed and transferred from the kingdom of um, darkness into the kingdom of light that is the kingdom of god that's the kingdom of jesus the kingdom of the sun and then say because you are familiar with it you now go back but your citizenship is in the kingdom of light no even jesus says that you cannot have two masters you will either love one or hate one you cannot love sin and then okay you can love sin (laughs) i hate jesus because then that is the that is the work of the power of disobedience that's that's a whole different thing that is you deciding that you want to be disobedient but if you say that you want to be obedient to christ and then you are still partying with the kingdom of darkness i can assure you that you love one and hate the other and if you love jesus you're going to keep his commandments and you keeping his commandments is already saying you do not love Jesus. You hate Jesus. Jesus died because he had not transgressed God's law. He was without sin. And because he was without sin, sin when he died, sin had no reason to hold him. The, and God being a righteous judge could not allow sin, inflict death or give the wages of death um upon jesus because he hadn't sinned that is what makes him the perfect lamb because he he there was a substitution he substituted himself for us which is why when we present ourselves to god we are covered by the blood it is his blood that presents us acceptable and holy unto god and um Jesus' resurrection, like I said, opened the door for us, opened the door into God's kingdom, opened the door into the ability and the, the, the sustenance, the spirit and the ability to obey Christ and obey God. Um, I'm just going to read a few things before we close up, just a few verses, a um, few scriptures um, that cover what we have talked about today. And that will be Philippians 2, Philippians 2, 7 to 9. But made himself, sorry, I will actually start with verse 5, Philippians 2, verse 5. He says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore god has therefore god also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Then I want us to read Romans 5, 21. Romans 5, 21, it says, um, So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Then I'll go to Colossians 1 verse 13, saying that he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Um, I'll just also add 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And then the last one will be Hebrews 2 verse 15. Um, actually, I would say Hebrews 2, 14 till the end, that is 18. It says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, who is able to aid those who are te- who are tempted? Another thing before I actually forget, there was also another scripture that I wanted to talk about, and it was the entrance of another, I would say the protocol of how sin works as well, and sin works through temptation, and which is why there's a scripture that says, do not say that ye were tempted, like, tempted of god for god does not tempt with evil um but that was actually going to be next week's episode so before we go out i just want to pray over each and every person that has listened to this um father in the name of jesus lord i pray that your spirit will make clear what is still in doubt father lord i pray that the places that I was not able to explain or speak in the way and in the manner you wanted to to your people, that your spirit may breathe over your word, the scriptures as well as the words that have been spoken through me. I pray that your spirit broods over and breathes upon it, that it might bring forth light and revelation to our hearts, O God. Father, Lord, I pray that the the revelation of what Jesus has done for us, O God, be found and dwell deeply in our hearts. I pray that your word will dwell in our hearts, that we may not sin against you, O God. Father, Lord, help us this week and every other week of our lives. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. So, yeah. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, comment. You can send me an email at hi.b at honeyandmilk.org. You can check me out or rather check the podcast page on Instagram at honeyandmilkpodcast. As always, I love you guys with the love of Christ. Stay blessed. Have an amazing week ahead and see you next week by God's grace. Bye.